Welcome to the Power of Owning Your Career podcast, the show for women who are seeking more fulfillment in life and simply not getting it from their current situation. We focus specifically on careers, but hey, we spend a lot of time in our careers, so making changes here will definitely create an impact in your overall happiness. I'm your host, Simone Morris, and my mission is to empower women to succeed. I believe that in order to powerfully own your career, you must decide and claim that you want to sit in the driver's seat. You must know that you deserve better and be willing to not only do the requisite work, but be willing to go out on a limb to ensure your success. Each episode focuses on profiling a leader who is clearly demonstrating ownership of their career. Join me and my guests as we explore career journeys and bring you actionable strategies to use to get into the driver's seat for your career, because ultimately your career is your responsibility. Let's get into the show. Greetings, Power of Owning Your Career listeners. I'm so thrilled that you're back this week again for another exciting episode. Believe me, I'm just as excited as you are about this week's episode. I I think about it and how excited I get for every episode. It feels like I'm getting a career coach every episode I record because I get to hear these career stories of inspiring leaders and I get to hear their path to the driver's seat and I get to hear their winning career advice and I learn something with every episode. I'm excited to talk to attorney Diani Winter Funday because she hails from the island of Jamaica. She has an amazing personality and such successes behind her. We're going to talk to her about her immigration law practice and just her journey from Jamaica to New York to Michigan to Florida. Really exciting stuff and uh, how she decided to move into the driver's seat and really answer her calling to step out on her own. And she's now the managing director and and, uh, founder of Winter Law. So super excited to have her on the podcast. And I know she will inspire you all with her message today. Let's go over and meet Diani. I'm so thrilled this week to have with us on the podcast, Diani Winter. Diani, I'm not sure how to pronounce the last part of your last name. I don't want to butcher it, so I'm going to ask you to say it for me. Welcome to the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Simone. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's talk about the last name. Yes. Funde, P-U-N-D-E. I always say it's Funde like having a fun day. Oh, how affable your personality. Funde, I think I won't get it wrong. You know, I think because I see the P, I want to hone in on, you know, and, and, and so part of uh, being inclusive is being vulnerable to say, I don't know how to pronounce that. So thank you, Funde. I'm not going to get it wrong now. Welcome to the podcast. I am so excited to unpack your career journey, if you will. Take us on the journey a little bit and, and, and tell us how you got to the driver's seat, which today you are an immigration attorney doing your own thing. So take us a little bit on that journey to where you are today. Thank you, Simone. And to all our guests for listening, thank you for listening. Um, so my journey, oh gosh, how far back should I go? So I grew up on the beautiful island of Jamaica yes. and um, grew up super confident, um, two-parent household, which I took for granted until I became a single parent myself. But I always took that for granted and the foundation that afforded me grew up in the church, again, super confident. You were always encouraged to be yourself, to go after. What I didn't know is what am I going to go after? Because I was living on an island with not many opportunities. There weren't many opportunities. So as much as you were encouraged as a young person to be, to grow, to dream, all of that had some kind of limitations because how are you going to accomplish all these things while living on an island? Fortunately for me, my mother immigrated. She left the island when I was 13. And the next time I saw her again, I think I was maybe 18. So she left the island, moved to the United States, and I followed suit 
when I was 21. So I did get the opportunity to, as we call it, pursue my American dream, which oh. I don't like call it an American dream because I had the dream before I arrived in America. So I'm going to say I pursued my dream. So that's kind of how my journey started. Mm, I want to connect to I can connect here because I am from Jamaica as well. I was born in the beautiful island of Jamaica and I migrated to the United States when um, I was in fifth grade. So my mom, and it's funny, I didn't know this about you. My mom left as well. And there was a, uh, let's see, six year difference where she went ahead and, and sort of uh, sowed seeds and, and, and created the opportunity to bring my sisters and I along to the United States. So I definitely can connect to what you're saying. And I've always wondered what would my journey be like if I remained in Jamaica, but I did have that viewpoint of the American dream or, uh, more possibilities, right? Uh, as they say back in Jamaica, they you know they think money grows on trees in America, but it's just a it just was a very different uh, upbringing. So I appreciate you bringing that to the forefront. So let's talk about getting to do your own thing because you know I'm sure when you came to the U.S., you possibly you had to um, work for other firms and and find your way to being an entrepreneur and having your own successful firm so what was that like for you so so i always say to people entrepreneurship is very jamaican very caribbean whether it's your grandma buying a dozen chickens and raising those chickens and selling a half of it or whether it was my dad who raised pigs and as a little girl I was responsible for doing the math. I had to do how many pounds and you get, you have to price it this way. So in my mind, I've always had that foundation of wanting to be independent. Um, how I, I, when I arrived in the United States, I didn't know my how. So I started out like everybody else, you know, I went off to law school and then you dream about landing in the perfect law firm or having that great job. And, and so for me, in the back of my mind, I always known that I wanted to own my own business, whether it was a law firm, whether it was a shoe store, whatever it was, I always wanted to own that. So I started out like many people straight out of law school, went to work for the State Bar of Michigan in, in administration. So I was regulating attorneys as one of my first jobs out of law school. So I didn't go straight into owning my own practice. What I did have, and I used to jokingly call it, I used to call it my side hustle. Mm -hmm. So I'm working my nine to five, collecting my paycheck. I had my insurance, but I had winter law on the side, meaning I wanted a purse or I wanted to go on a trip or I wanted something else outside of what my paycheck could do. I had and I've stopped calling it my hustle and I've always encouraged young women or young entrepreneurs to not call their business a hustle. It's a business. Mm -hmm. It's not a side, nothing. It's not a side hustle. It is a business. So I've always had my business, um, in addition to, to my, to my paycheck. Um, so entrepreneurship was very much a part of who I am. It was very much a part of how my family functioned. Um, and quite frankly, Simone, we didn't even call it entrepreneurship. We just call it making ends meet, mm. meaning daddy worked, but we need something else to make the ends meet. Mm. So that's kind of where my foundation uh, of ownership and being independent came from. And let me add many Caribbean people. We grew up watching Caribbean people owning stores, owning businesses, owning airlines. So it's not this foreign concept for me of owning my own business. Thank you for reminding me of that. So I came to the U.S. when I was nine, and I think I forget that. And I'm smiling as you're, you're painting the picture of what is so true in Jamaica. I mean, my aunt, they had a store. They still have a store, and they're managing the thing. But, you know, sometimes you. when you get into the crux, if you will, of entrepreneurship with the challenges of it, you forget that foundation. And so thank you for reminding me of that foundation. So Diani, what was it that said to you, okay, now my business takes the forefront and working for someone else 
another law firm, if you will, takes takes a back seat. So you you got into the well, you know, it kind of feels like you've been in the driver's seat. So <laughs> when did you know you <laughs> <laughs> it's born and in the driver's seat. So tell me about that. <laughs> so I knew my business was taking the front seat when it when I started making more money than my paycheck. So I wasn't giving my baby, my business, half of what I was giving to other people. And it was making money. It was doing well. And I was having so much fun doing it. So I had a blast running my business from the side. And so there was a point in my career um, where I was highly recruited. You know that, like you're always being recruited. And I, I would think to myself, what do they see in me? Why they want me to run their, their, their firm or their practice? I remember being recruited by one of the largest immigration practices here in Tampa Bay, and they wanted me to run three offices, El Paso, Texas, Jacksonville, Florida, and their Tampa office. And I packed up my business again and I went to work for this law firm. And believe it or not, Simone, I stood there for 12 months. I stayed there for 12 months and I was just doing well, building their practice, doing extremely well. And I sat back one day and I said, what if I gave Winter Law the same energy, mm -hmm. the same focus that I'm giving to this practice? And don't you know what? I typed up that letter Everybody thought I was crazy. Six-figure income, corner office on the 32nd floor, glass, floor to glass ceiling, had attorneys working for me, full staff working for me, traveling like it's nobody's business, running all over the country, enjoying the practice because it was immigration law. And I sat down, I typed the letter, gave my notice, gave my two-week notice, grabbed my purse, and I walked out. Hmm. And I said, I am going to stay in my business and build my business because I had the confidence in myself. Um, I've had a lot of time, a lot of years to, to hone my skills. So why not use those skills to build something that my children can inherit? Um, instead of doing 14 hours for somebody else, why don't I do 15 hours for me? And that's kind of when I, I fully got into the driver's seat of this thing and said, you know what, I am going to build my business, come hell or high water. Wonderful. So, so what conversation or, you know, how do you uh, push back the fear of making that decision? I think there are many people who have something that they want to explore, but, you know, um, even from a Caribbean standpoint, the in, what's ingrained around, make sure you have insurance and, and these safe things that keep you tied to carrying forward someone else's dream and putting yours on the back burner, possibly. Mm -hmm. What what were you saying to yourself to that you're going to stick to this no matter what? Because it, it seems like you were like, what if I did this? But what kept you going down that path? I think it's, um, I've always taken risks. Mm -hmm. So I even looked at me moving here at 21 to New York City. That was a risk right? People think, people in the Caribbean think, oh, you're moving to foreign, you're moving to Jamaica, you're moving to, to New York. So people think it's a thing. They don't understand how risky and scary that is. And Simone, you've been there. You, yes. you've, left, you've left everything you've known. So risk number one. Risk number two, packing up New York City, moving to Michigan to attend law school, because I couldn't get into any other law school in the country. My LSAT score was super low. I knew nothing about law school and law school admission tests. So that was risk number two, moving to Michigan. Risk number three, being recruited to move to Florida to, to launch a campus for one of the largest law schools in the country. And I packed up my family and moved again. So I'm always taking these risks. So for me, it was an easy conversation with myself because I'm always encouraging people, take risk, take, I'm always doing that cheerleading. So for me, it was a very easy conversation in saying, why don't you take a risk on you? Mm. What's the worst thing that can happen? And I'm always very cautious. And I say that to our listeners, not burning bridges behind me. Mm. So even though I'm leaving, I'm leaving on good terms. So I can kind of call up and say, hey, can I come back? But at the same time, I do not want to leave a big enough bridge where it's easy to, for me to walk back over. Mm. 
Mm. Do you get what I mean? I get so, it. I get it. I'm pondering yeah. on that. That's so good. Yes. So I want to leave enough room for me to say, you know what? It didn't work out, but I almost want to, don't want to make it too cushy for them to say, come back in. I want to be, I want to make sure that I've launched, that I've jumped. And, you know, I always say, look, the parachute isn't going to open right away. And, you know, I'm, I'm flying 60 miles an hour, but I don't want to make it easy for me to just go back across that bridge, go back to the comfort of that corner office lifestyle. What, what, um, what would you say to someone to encourage them to bet on themselves in their career or to take more risks, plural, in their career? I always say, and this is what I've said to myself, what do I have to lose? So right now I have a couple things in my favor, favor, right? I have energy. Mm. I have a little bit of hindsight, right? I do not want to get to, if God's willing, the age of 60 and look at myself in the mirror and go, what if? So I would say plan. I don't want anybody that's listening to think I didn't come to a plan. One of the things I did for those 12 months while I was working in that high six figure job, I was stacking my coins because I knew I wanted to be able to at least say to my family, I'm going to take this risk. However, here is the plan. The mortgage is paid. The tuition for the children are paid. So I, it's not just, Oh, let me just take this risk. Let me just jump off this bridge. Mm -hmm. No, I want to, I, I put things in place leading up to this plan. So I would say, what is the harm that could happen if you take, what, 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 what is the worst thing that can happen if you just make a bet on yourself? And when you make a bet on yourself, you work twice as hard. Yes. You work twice as hard, Simone, and you know this. It's, you're just constantly going, like you're energized for one. You're super energized, even if you're not making a lot of money, but your investment in yourself gives you this newfound energy that you are going to make this work. Mm, lovely. So you've been on both sides of the fence and, and, and even with your upbringing from an entrepreneurial standpoint, tell us, Diani, what is your formula? What is the winning formula for soaring in your career, for owning your career? Um, showing up as me showing up as myself. What am I going to chat the patwa? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, you show up unapologetically as you. Mm. My clients know the lawyer that's coming to court. My friends know the Diani that's coming into the room. You, Simone, know the Diani you're getting today. Like, I have no apologies for how I speak, Gone are the days when, you know, when you're just coming from the Caribbean, you're trying to hide the local yes. accent. Those days are over for me. Gone are the days when I walk into a room trying to look like everybody else in a gray suit. Those days are over for Diani, like over for me, right? So I show up authentically as me. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean, so it means I also have to break some of the myths about Caribbean immigration lawyers, right? First of all, they think we're not making any money. Um, we're always late. We don't know the law. So I make sure I know what's going on in the law every single day. So that means my knowledge, my legal knowledge is on point. It means I'm going to show up on time, sometimes 15 minutes early. Because there are these stereotypes that as a Black woman or as a woman, as a Caribbean woman, that we have to overcome. Mm right? So showing up as me does not mean showing up as, you know, the Diani that was 19. But it means as I show up into spaces, I'm not going to apologize for who I am or how I sound or what I look like. Not apologizing. So I think that has been, I call it my secret sauce. Mm. It, it's just, it's just who I, you're getting Diani. And and I don't, whether I'm working with a European client or I'm working with a client from Haiti or Jamaica, they're getting the same stellar, stellar, stellar representation across the board. Tell us uh, two things. One, how, what's a resource that people can use or a tool to empower them to show up 
as their authentic self? Um, so this goes back to investing in you. So I've invested in, in branding coaches. I've invested in, in marketing teams. So I've, I'm always thinking of ways to reinvent myself and also to make sure my craft is being honed. So my branding coach has helped a lot. And that means spending money, right? Whether and then finding mentors, mentors that look like you, sound like you, mentors that don't look like you, mentors that don't sound like you. So always surrounding myself, finding myself in places where I can grow and learn, right? So it's not just about, let me show up as myself. No, it's showing up with having had discussions with individuals that have gone ahead of you mm -hmm. or that can offer you some insight on how you grow as a person or how you grow grow as an attorney. What are some resources that you have found to be useful to help you in your career, winning in your career? Um, joining professional associations. So one of the groups I joined very early on in my career was ALI. It's for American Immigration Lawyers Association. And it's the pandemic, so we're not getting a chance to meet and greet as much. But I was a very active member in ALA, and that's just all immigration attorneys. And so you have a chance to talk with immigration judges. You have a chance to go to conferences. You have a chance to just kind of grow within the field. So I would say whatever you're doing, if you're an accountant, if you're a lawyer, if you are um, an entrepreneur, find those little you know, BNIs or find chambers of commerce. All these things will help you develop and grow because you'll find yourself surrounded with business-minded people. So this will definitely help you to kind of grow and develop in your career. Is there a book that, that comes to mind that's really inspired you in your career as well? Yes. Yeah, I was looking for my book, Brand You. Mm. Brand You by Dr. Hume Johnson. I read We're on that. the podcast. We yes. have a fabulous, fabulous episode. You're kidding me with no. Dr. Hume Johnson? No, so good. So, so good. Dr. Hume Johnson is my branding coach. I've been working with her since 2000, maybe in 18, 2018. So, and that's what I mean about investing in yourself. So two books I would recommend. The one um, by Dr. Hume Johnson Number two, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm. So those two books, I go, but I don't, then I also read The Alchemist. Um, I love that book. By Paulo Coelho. So those three, but my top, 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 top pick is Brand You by, with, with Dr. Hume Johnson. I think that is just, for one, she's Caribbean. For two, her journey, what she's gone through and all that is so like compelling right? So those are um, three resources that I would say for that young entrepreneur, that young business person, that individual that just wants to take their first risk. I would recommend one of those three books. Wonderful. And listeners, I want to tell you that I have interviewed Dr. Hume or Hume Johnson. And let me say it is a fabulous interview about her journey. I believe she talked about Australia or New Zealand, like she's ha moving from Jamaica. It's a wonderful interview. So make a note after this episode to go and listen to that episode. I believe it's last season, but it, it's a wonderful interview as well. Wonderful. I love that. I love connecting the dots on the podcast. So you also talked about, Diani, um, you invest in yourself daily uh, in terms of your legal knowledge. Talk to us about what that's like and what you do. Okay. So I make sure so I have morning routine. Um, and I keep my morning routine probably 70% of the time. I'm going to be honest. It's yeah. not 100% <laughs> of the time. So the first thing I do in the morning is I read. So I subscribe to like docket wise. I subscribe to immigration bulletin. So the first thing I do is I just look what comes out. If it's a case law, if it's um, policy that has been changed, I go to uscis.gov that deals with all things immigration. And I just kind of scan because sometimes I have clients that are waiting in the wings for laws to change or policies to change. So I invest in me 
by reading through gaining knowledge so that I am becoming a better attorney. And Simone, I'm 15 years in. So you would say, why do you need to still? Yeah, I still need to keep my skills sharp. So I read each morning on all things immigration. And sometimes I switch over to all things business because I think that's one of the things with entrepreneurs, even though I'm a lawyer, I have a business, I have staff that needs to get paid. So I have to make sure both are intact. So as part of my morning routine, I look at the legal aspects, what ha if anything has changed. I also look at my business from, you know, like an eagle eye. Where are we last year, last month this time, last year this time financially, what are the numbers looking like, right? And that helps me say, okay, I need to either reach out to more clients, step up our marketing, find out what's going on with some call, make some calls, things of that sort. So that's kind of how I get through my mornings and then I'll start working. Most times I'm up by 5.30 or 6, um, start up with a little morning walk and then come back and, and get the day going. Wonderful. Well, this certainly has been an interview filled with so many career gems. I have enjoyed talking to you and learning and connecting from a Jamaican, big up, big up, a big Jamaican up. standpoint. Um, are there any parting words that you have to our listeners on um, career advice, et cetera? Um, I think my, my career advice is, and, and it's always been, um, believe in yourself and your abilities. I know we're getting into a magical time when we have, or we're about to have, I would say, a woman of color in the White House. You and I have never had that, right? So we've had our magical moments, but it's getting more magical for young women, for women of color. We're having all these phenomenal, 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 um, you know, individuals doing well. So I would say just have the confidence in yourself. Once you have the confidence in yourself, people will notice. People will notice. People want to hire the attorney that is confident. I do not want to hire an attorney or a, anyone to handle my business if I have a feeling that they're a little bit unsure of themselves. So I would say the mo even if you're unemployed, even if you're unemployed and you're going to be interviewed for a job, walk into that job, walk into that space with confidence in your abilities and the confidence in yourself. And I think that's what kind of sets me apart. I'm always super confident in my abilities. Even Simone, when I go into court and I'm panicking like a little duck, <laughs> you know, the, the feet are like this under the water. Um, I would say have the confidence in yourself and your abilities. Wonderful. Well, tell our listeners if they'd like to stay connected with you, how they can do so. Um, so if you would like to reach me, you can find me at dionniewinter.com, D-I-O-N-N-I-E winter.com, dionniewinter.com. And you'll, you'll find out more about me. Some of what I've mentioned here today, you'll find out. And I'm always open to chat with anyone who's starting their career, middle career, or looking to exit the game. Nice. Wonderful. And Diani, as I understand it, you're leaving us with a wonderful treat for our listeners. So be sure to listen to this episode fully and instructions are coming on how you can get a special treat courtesy of Diani. Diani, thank you so much for being a guest on the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me, Simone. Wonderful. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you for listening to the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. It is my hope that you enjoyed today's episode. You can check out the show notes for this episode on the SimoneMorrisEnterprises.org website by clicking the podcast menu. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and tell a friend or two about it. 